Hello there. In this video, I want to talk about zero-shot text-to-image generation. Uh, this paper is published by OpenAI in 2021, and it is famous as DALI. Uh, you know that recently DALI V2 uh, came along, but this is the first version of the DALI, and uh, I just uh, found it in my list. That's why I bring it in the top priority, because uh, many people are talking about the DALI V2 now. Uh, so let's go to the paper. I will uh, talk about the paper and literature review, then we will go to uh, reviewing some quotes uh, already in the uh, GitHub repository of Lucy Twain. In the abstract, they mentioned that uh, we describe a simple approach for uh, text to image generation task based on the transformer that autoregressively models the text and image token as a single stream of data. So in the introduction, they started with the approach, an algorithm called DRAW is the first algorithm for generative models. Uh, and after that, uh, some other model like generative adversarial network using uh, GAN or rather than the recurrent variational autoencoder are introduced. And these kind of algorithm could improve the image accuracy and fidelity. And then after that, uh, some people worked on some other architectures like combination of methods. It said that these include improving the generative model architecture with modification like a multi-scale generators, integrating attention layers and auxiliary loss. And uh, still this domain is in progress. Here they mention after the compute model size and data are scaled carefully, autoregressive transformers can achieve impressive results in several domains, such as text, images, and audio. So this is one of the main requirements for using the autoregressive transformers that you should have enough scale, enough data, and larger model sizes. Uh, basically the DALI or the paper uh, zero shot text to image classification includes two separate stages. In a stage one, they train a discrete variational autoencoder and they compress images in size 256 by 256 to 32 by 32 grid of image tokens. Uh, this is DVAE. Uh, we have some DQVAE, discrete quantized variational autoencoder that came after that. So in the first stage, they just tokenize images. It's like a compression on images. So instead of up, Instead of 256 by 256, now we can use 32 by 32 images. In second stage, they tokenize the text using BPE. And BPE is a byte pair encoding. Uh, it is very famous in many other text and language models, like it, it's used in Roberta models, for example. And they tokenize that uh, text. And also they concatenated that 256 tokenized text with the tokens of images, uh, which was 32 by 32. So we have 256 text tokenized features, and we have uh, 1,024 image tokens. And they concatenated and joined and applied to the transformers. So this is the uh, overall uh, view of the architecture of DALI. They talked about the formulation that how they designed this formulation. Um, they use the elbow algorithm, maximizing the evidence lower bound. And uh, if you search for that, like searching for reparametrization tricks and elbow methods in the research literatures. So you will find that in many conference paper, uh, many people are working on these approaches for uh, reparametrization of some of the formulation for applying the gradient descent. So they mentioned that if you have images X and some text in Y, and we have some token Z from the RGB images. So in DVAE, we have encoder and we have decoder, and Z are in the uh, latent feature of the uh, DVAE coming from the encoder. So if you have images, text, and those encoded information, so we can have, uh, we can, estimate the distribution between images and text. And uh, for maximizing this one, we can maximize their lower bound too. 
and the lower bound can be formulated like this. So in, in the first one, we suppose uh, that Y, which is text and Z, which, which are token from the images um, are independent. Therefore, if we have Z token, we won't get the X. So it is the decoder of the uh, variational autoencoder. Another part is this part. So we have X images and also we wanna get token. So this is the encoder of the uh, variational autoencoder. And the next part is this one, which is uh, the joint distribution of the text and the tokens coming from the image. They mentioned here all of the things that I've said already. And one of the important points is that this joint distribution is discrete. So we cannot apply gradient on that. So they mentioned this part here. They mentioned the ELB become difficult to optimize because Q5 is a discrete distribution and we cannot use the parameterization gradient to maximize it. If you search for this word in the Google, the parameterization gradient, you will find many papers talking about the methods that we can apply. Instead of applying the reparameterization trick, because this is discrete, they use Gumbel softmax, and, and this, this kind of relaxation can be used in a sort of reparameterization. And the likelihood for P theta is uh, evaluated using the log uh, Laplacian distribution. So they mentioned also here that the loss for the encoder in the autoencoder is defined based on the log Laplacian. So these are some points for implementing this uh, formulation. And this formulation is implemented in two steps. In the first step, we train these two, the Q phi and P theta. And in the next step, we train the model to understand this joint distribution. So they said that we found that reducing respective field size of the convolution around the relaxation led to generalizing better to the true ELB. So this is another point that during implementation, uh, it's important that we need to reduce the field size of the convolution. So uh, another important point is that uh, when we wanna combine the embedding of the text and the embedding of the images, we need to have some padding between these two. Uh, they said we limit the length of the text caption to 256 token, though it is not clear uh, what to do for the padding position in between the last text token and the start of the image token. One option is to set the logic to uh, minus infinity in the self-attention operation. Instead, we opt to learn a special padding token separately for each of 256 text position. This token is used only when no text token is available in the preliminary experiment on, concept, on conceptual captions. So they have a picture here in the appendix showing that uh, as an example, if you have some text, so we have a starting point of a text, you have text embedding, text embedding, and text embedding is finished. So we have pad embedding, two pad, em pad embedding here, and then we have the image tokens. And, in the next row, we will have the positional embedding. So for text, we have position embedding zero until text is finished. Then for padding, we don't have anything. And for images, we have two positional embedding, one for row and one for column. And we just uh, add a summation to all of these information and create our input to the transformation. So these padding are not like minus infinity, like in any language model, they just use some Terrainable parameters. So uh, another important point that they mention is that uh, when we have the output of transformers, uh, the loss that they define is uh, defined separately for text tokens output and the image tokens outputs. They mentioned that they multiply the cross entropy loss for the text by one by eight and the cross entropy loss for the image by seven divided by eight. So they put more weight on the image uh, generation rather than text generation. So that's it. The whole algorithm is just, we have this embedding from DVAE and uh, also we have some text tokens. These all concatenated coming to another transformers and we have another tokens 
So this is a zero shot text to image generation. It can be applied in, in many ways. For example, uh, it is still unclear for me, some part of it, like uh, be, if we can apply only text here and get images, if we can apply only images and get a text, if you apply concatenation of them and get the same here. So different, different kind of approaches can be applied here. Uh, if you know uh, better than me, please put in the comment uh, that how this training uh, or data is uh, prepared for training these kind of models. Or another approach is having two similar text and image here and two other similar text and image here. Overall, that's it. Let's go to the code. So if you search for Lucid Rain and Dolly PyTorch, you will find that there is a Dolly PyTorch library that many people already use that for creating text to image pairs and model generators. And I just want to go through some parts of it, which is important and related to the paper. So inside Dolly PyTorch, we have the Dolly PyTorch. And if you go down, we will have a class, a module Dolly. And for that Dolly, let's go to the forward function. I just want to show how this process works. So in forward function, uh, what they do is if you have a text, they get the text range and we will get the text and range of the text and we add the padding to the text and do the embedding and find the tokens and find the positional embedding also. And if image exists, so it means that we can train or apply a model that doesn't have any image, or we can, we can do the both as I explained. Uh, if there is an image, the image come here and we should have variational autoencoder image. The size should be based on the input of the VAE that we train. So here we get the embedding of the image, then we get the positional embedding of the image. So now we have, uh, positional embedding and the image embedding combined, sum together, and we concatenate the tokens and image embeddings, the tokens coming from the text and the image embedding that we have. And now we have the final tokens if we have images. And finally, we pass this token to the transformer and get the output. And there is just a normalization and linear layer after that to convert it to logits. So as I mentioned, we have two different laws, one for text and one for image. So we have mask for image and text. It mentioned text should predict text and image predict image. So we have two different laws and we can have some loss, uh, weight loss for the image and text. And finally, we will uh, get the final loss. Yeah, so there are two other functions, generate text and generate image. For generate text, you can get the text or not get the text and just ask the model to generate any text for us. So in that case, we pass a token. If you have a text, we tokenize that, apply the same and apply the tokens to the transformer. But this time we just get the part related to the text. For generating image, we do the same. So we have a function generate image and the generate image can get the text and we can pass image or not. So if we pass image, we uh, feed it to the model. And uh, if we don't get it, we, we don't need to pass that. So the transformer will uh, respond according to what we feed into the model. So uh, there are some, some other part of this code like using clip. Uh, we didn't talk about those part clip, just giving, giving us a score about how these uh, image and text are uh, related together, uh, maybe in the, in the next videos, I will talk about them, but uh, that's it. For using this library, you can, you can simply use the pip version for installing that or using that files I mentioned. That is really straightforward and easy to do that. And because it is already uh, written, I, I didn't put time to written from scratch. That's it. Hope that you enjoyed the video. Please feel free to share the video, leave a comment and have fun. Bye.